Hey guys, this is a PSA for lifters. Have you ever been out-muscled by some corn-fed dude who doesn't even lift? If so, don't be embarrassed. It's happened to all of us because that dude knows the real secret and it's dummy strength. He has it and you don't. What's up guys, Alec on Kiri here and today we're gonna talk about an idea that I've kind of been harping on in recent history and that's a concept that I call dummy strength. You know, dummy strength. You ever, you ever gone down to the farm and seen Bubba over there and tossing around bales of hay like, like he's training for the keg toss in the next World's Strongest Man? Then he challenges you to a little bit of wrestling and he accidentally breaks both your arms in the process. That is because Bubba has got that dummy strength, man. And it has nothing to do with him being stupid, although he probably is. But in reality, it has everything to do with the type of training that he does. Growing up on the farm, man, make no mistake, that is its own form of training, much of which would actually resemble the types of things that you see in a lot of strongman events. And over the course of modern times, how many of the most elite lifters to ever grace the earth actually grew up on farms. I would argue that a disproportionate number of them have, just from what I can tell. And there really seems to be a subtle but dramatic difference between the strength built using nothing but highly predictable implements like barbells and the strength that is built using really anything and everything else. Sandbags, sleds, shit that you carry, shit that you throw, shit that you toss and heave and twist around with that reverberates, shifts and jars and wobbles when you try to handle it. Basically, we're primarily talking about the distinctions between dealing with heavy and awkward real life objects as opposed to simply dealing with heavy barbells, right? Barbells are designed to be as ergonomical as possible, right? To, to make the experience of lifting heavy shit as pleasant as it can possibly be, which is still not very pleasant, but it is a hell of a lot more pleasant than dealing with heavy and awkward objects. If I have to help one more friend move their furniture, I'm going to gouge my eyeballs out. But for some reason, I do enjoy playing with sandbags and shit like that in the gym. Go figure. <laughs> And just real quick guys, if you're in the market for a top-notch meal prep company, then be sure to check out Flex Pro Meals and use code on Kiri Elite for 20% off your order. The link is in the description. The food's legit, it usually arrives in just a couple days. They have a bunch of different high protein meal options and it's a really easy and convenient way to help keep your diet and your macros on track. And now, back to your regularly scheduled program. Anywho, I have a theory about what dummy strength is. It, it may or may not be right, but I do have a theory. Nonetheless, you, you really kind of know this when you see it, right? When some husky burly dude displays it, there's no mistaking it. That is dummy strength and the eyes know it. So to try to quantify it may be a little bit superfluous, but I'm gonna give it a stab anyway. I believe primarily it is in the the core musculature, right? Now, I'm not gonna break those muscles down. I'm not gonna distinguish between, between the internal and external obliques, the, the sides versus the front, the superficial versus the deep, rectus versus transverse, the, the lats, the glutes, the erectors. All of these muscles comprise the core. And the important part is their ability to work in synchrony, right? To work in synchrony in order to produce maximal tension. The more tension, the more stability. The more stability, the greater the force transfer from the limbs through to the environment. When we work with these sorts of tools that I've been talking about, we emphasize this capacity to varying degrees across the synchronous unit, and oftentimes above all else, right? There are also aspects of stabilizer muscles that come into play here, muscles that often get neglected, as well as the hands, the fingers, the forearms, and, and getting all those things worked in different sorts of ways. But basically, the, this concept that we're gonna go into a little bit deeper in a minute, it, it really, really challenges you in a different sort of way, a, a way that you, you can't really replicate to any meaningful degree if all you do is train with a barbell. So first today, I want to tell you guys what I believe the applications of this dummy concept strength are. Then I want to kind of move into what it's not, 
what it won't help you to achieve, what goals it won't help you to get to move towards. And then I want to finish up the video by explaining how I think it, it's best to build dummy strength, what tools and methodologies or tools and exercises are going to help us to most optimally work our way towards achieving this concept as best as we all can for ourselves. So, so what are the applications of this dummy strength concept? What is it good for? And why should you even want to take the time and the effort to build it? Firstly, I guess you have to ask yourself why you train in the first place, right? For me, I want to have fun. I want to build strength and resilience that are going to serve me well as I age. And I want to be able to do badass shit, right? I want to be as physically capable and well-rounded as possible. I've talked about that many, many times on this channel. And for me, dummy strength is going to be a part of that. And training for dummy strength, it checks all three of these aforementioned boxes, right? So the variety that it, that it necessarily entails provides spice and excitement to your training. The different sorts of carries, lifts, throws, etc. they make you strong and powerful while building God level core strength. And that is gonna make you resilient while simultaneously making you capable of performing badass feats of physicality. So that's all very important to me. I wanna be able to do this for a long time and I wanna do it at a level that is a, a step above what the average guy is ever gonna get to or even a step above what the above average guy is ever gonna get to. And this is a glaring hole that most people never address and this puts me a step ahead of everybody else. So that all sounds great to me. But then further, or the other side of the coin, why would you potentially consider not chasing this idea of dummy strength? What For what goals would it not be a helpful thing? Two, primarily, that I can think of off the top of my head. First, barbell-only sports. So things like powerlifting and Olympic lifting. In my opinion, training for this dummy strength concept that I'm gonna outline very soon, it is not gonna make you better at those endeavors. It's just gonna be an opportunity cost. It's gonna take away from time and energy that could have been put towards becoming stronger and better with a barbell, right? I already kind of talked about the distinctions between those two things. And the simple fact of the matter is that the barbell only sports are not reliant on this concept of dummy strength because they're, they're just, they're more precise than that, right? Now you can view that as a positive or a negative. Just really kind of depending on the lens that you choose to look through. Now, I think personally, previously, I would have viewed that that um, precision of barbell sports as more of a positive thing. Today, I think I actually view it as much, much more of a negative thing. As well, if muscular hypertrophy or aesthetics, whatever that means to you, are your only goals in the gym, then again, this dummy strength concept, it's really not for you. It, it just, it's most, it'd be a waste of time, it'd be a waste of energy, it'd just be an opportunity cost, right? The things that I'm gonna detail in just a minute, they, they don't really build muscle, kind of, sort of, at least not in the way that an aesthetics-oriented individual would care for, right? But for everybody else, keep on listening now to the end of the video because now we're going to go into some of the best methods that I think exist to help you build that dummy strength and turn yourself into a corn-fed badass. All right, so now the part you've all been waiting for, how to build dummy strength. I kind of alluded to this at the beginning of the video, but I believe that the concepts surrounding the sport of strongman really hone in well on this aspect. A lot of top-level elite world strongmen can't squat or deadlift as much as many of their equivalent uh, equivalent body weight high level powerlifters can, right? But in reality, the strong men are stronger than the powerlifters because they train this dummy strength concept every single week, pretty much year round. They also train with barbells, right? So I'm not saying we can throw the barbell out with the bathwater. Barbell training is still the foundation of everything here. Don't get me wrong on that. You need that predictable, stable implement to help you continually raise the ceiling for overall force production. But once you start to augment that foundational training with the strongman inspired movements, that is when you go from gym bro to badass. So some ways that I've been incorporating this concept in my training in the last few months. Lots of different types of loaded carries. So I do overhead carries, sometimes with a barbell, sometimes with a sandbag, sometimes with dumbbells, zercher carries, front rack carries. Obviously you can use a yoke if you have access to one and get a way to do it is just put a barbell on your back but that's a little bit more dangerous than a yoke. Sometimes I go heavy for short distances. Sometimes I go light for long distances. Mix it up 
and do both of these things. I also bought these swing straps from Spud a few months ago to do carries with, and they are fucking redonkulous, dude. So just for some perspective here, I have loaded 550 pounds into a front rack and taken that for a nice little stroll. I did that a few years ago. The very first time I used the swing straps, I put 315 pounds on the bar, stood up with it in a front rack position, and I could not walk. And I tried, believe me, I fucking tried. My brain would not allow me to take a single step. I shit you not, because the instability was so great, uh, and my brain knew my body wasn't ready to handle it, and so it just wouldn't even let me try. Since then, I've gotten that up into the high 300s, and there's room for more probably breaking into the fours, but just to give you guys some perspective, right? A front rack carry is already a, a massive hit to the upper back and the entire core region. Add in these swing straps, and it just becomes next fucking level. Another favorite of mine is sled work. You guys have all seen that. Push it, pull it, drag it, run with it, go heavy, go light whatever just do the damn work here and do it often and you'll be rewarded for it next up is sandbag work and this is a more recent investment of mine i recently bought a couple different bags both of which are loadable one of them i can get up to like 130 pounds or so and the other i can get that one closer to 250 pounds so both are valuable for me now with this Obviously, you can carry it in a variety of different ways, which is something I've been playing around with, but also just loading a heavy ass sandbag onto the shoulders is a bitch and a half. Dude, the forearms, the fingers, the hands, they all get trashed. The upper back and the core musculature have to take a huge engagement or are very much involved in this activity as well. There are aspects of power involved in heaving the bag from the hips up to the shoulders. It's just all around a good time that really nails the body in multiple different ways at once and gives you one hell of a stimulus that you don't really get elsewhere. Where. And the final piece of the puzzle is throws. Now you can throw anything, right? A medicine ball is kind of the obvious choice, but you can really throw anything so long as you have the space to throw it and the thing you're throwing hopefully doesn't break on impact. Otherwise, you'll just have to find something else to throw. But in terms of throwing shit, tossing stuff up overhead like a push press is great for the legs and the shoulders heaving objects backwards overhead like a keg toss that's going to build power in the hips you can do a variety of chest passes side tosses scoop tosses really anything that you can think of it's real your your imagination is really the only limiting factor here these are all all these exercises are going to build power along with working on that force transfer aspect through the core region they're going to get the hands and the forearm and forearms involved as well and they're going to teach you how to coordinate between the upper and the lower body which is an important but understated benefit so yeah man that is dummy strength as far as i see it and you don't have to go full strong man to get all the benefits here you don't have to move down to the farm and start bailing hay with Bubba but with just a few simple tweaks and additions to your training you can get pretty much all the benefits of these endeavors most of the equipment that I've personally obtained so far for these purposes it's relatively inexpensive which makes this concept and these ideas accessible and as far as I'm concerned we would all be a lot stronger and a lot more badass if more of us started to incorporate these types of ideas into our training. So have fun, guys. Start small and work your way up slowly so you don't hurt yourself, please. And if you have any specific questions about how to implement these concepts into your training, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, it's all I got for today, guys. If you enjoy these types of videos or you simply find them informative, please remember to hit the like button before you go. Leave me some love in the comments down below. The engagement's really helpful for my channel. If you find the info here helpful, Helpful and you just want to throw some support my way, then be sure to check out on CareEliteFitness.com and pick up one of my training programs. I've sold a few thousand of those bad boys over the last couple years since I released them, and the gains that people have been reporting back to me just been freaking awesome, man. I'm always happy to hear it. So if you've got some gains to report to me, be sure to hit me up and let me know. And if you haven't grabbed one yet, be sure to grab one today and hop onto that gains train. Anyway, that's all I got for today, guys. Keep training hard. I'll catch you all next time.